I don't know, he's doing something. It's magic. I'm not tech I'm not tech savvy at all. Me either. That's why I'm like, I'm just like, well, I'm sitting here. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. I'm just bringing up, I'm my breath. I'm just like, bringing up the theme music. <laughs> there we go. Nice. All right, dog, where are you going? All right, everybody. Welcome to the bunker. We have a special episode tonight. It's not Levi. It's, uh, we have with us two out of the three Appalachian witches. Ashley Connor and Pat O'Keefe are descendants of the mystics of the mountains, Appalachian granny women, also known as granny witches. Each is a talented psychic medium, Reiki, master, natural healer. This popular witchy trio, uh, including uh, Misty, who is not here. Uh, I lost my voice. Three Witchy Trio are authors. Their latest books are Three Appalachian Witches, Moon Magic, Mirror Magic, and The Witch's Ladder. Appalachian Granny Witch Magic and Appalachian Conjuring. They also host a bi-monthly podcast, Appalachian Cauldron, answering questions passed by their audience. These busy conjurers were featured in documentary season of The Witch, which is fantastic, which can be found on many streaming awesome. services. Yeah, it's great. Uh, Pat, Ashley, and Misty are currently working on their own documentary about Appalachian Granny women titled there's magic in them mountains the film is set to premiere in the fall of 2025 these three appalachian witches although we have two of the three uh have traveled the country conducting seances guy readings energy healing sessions classes workshops on a plethora of spiritual and paranormal topics so welcome ashley and pat to the bunker thank you for having us welcome yeah thank I you. We're excited. <laughs> yeah, we've been talking about this for so long, and it just, we've been talking about it for years, and just the scheduling just didn't work out, and, you know, things, you know, life happens and stuff like that. But uh, we're super excited to have you ladies here. We just rewatched Season of the Witch uh, earlier today, just so we can brush up on it, because we had seen it when it first uh, was released. I watched it three times. Yeah, and it's it's super excellent. Um, it one of the points uh, that you touched on early on in the in the in the documentary which was cool was where you were talking about like egypt samaria and uh and the the understanding of technology and magic and science and medicine sort of mm -hmm. being all the same thing at that point and it had since then it's become split and now it's all there's all these different disciplines that used to be all the same thing and i thought that was really cool i thought it was a great sort of place to start the podcast i'd love to get your takes on that well, during, you know, at, at a certain point in human development, at the very beginning, men would look up into the sky and he would try to explain his environment by using the energy that was attached to things such as sky, earth, uh, death, life, and they would equate a specific god or goddess energy to that specific energy. And so at one point, of course, magic, even stage magic, would have been looked at as extremely powerful. And in fact, I'm sure that uh, some leaders within religious sects would use uh, would use magic, uh, what we would know as stage magic, in order to um, uh, to create, if you will, um, power, a power structure, so that they could keep power. They could, you know, all and shock the the people around them. And we just progressed to the point where now we have technology, and we. Um, we look at technology as um, something fundamental, fundamentally mechanical, if you will. But if that would have existed during that time, then it would have simply been looked at as magic. But yes, there's, there's rather a triangulation of that. Hmm. I hope I explained that. <laughs> Interesting, yeah. You... Sorry, we got we were going to say that. No, I just said that was oh. interesting. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were going somewhere. Sorry. <laughs> what are your, what's like your, what? the magic? Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, Ash. Go ahead, Ash. Yeah, sorry. You're good. 
Um, the magic on all of it, I think, is um, if you think back, like Pat was saying back in the old days, like stupid little things. If I went back in that time and I was like, OK, I'm going to tell you there's going to be a magic small box that you're going to be able to ask any question and you are going to be able to get the answer within seconds. It doesn't matter what question you have. Back then, that would be like, holy crap, that's magic. That's witchcraft. She's foretelling these things. I think technology and medications and things like that or any medical field take, we take for granted the magic that's always around us. Um, if you think about it, back in the old days, the granny women would take actual herbs, mix them up, which would kind of be any medical like medicines you have now. It was just in a manner that was more, you would say, rudimentary. So now medical, like as in um, there were certain herbs that they would buy from us in the Appalachian that they would go into big pharmaceutical companies. Um, gosh, what was it? There's a certain one, ginseng, like that was a big thing. Oh. Um, but we take away the magic that's actually around us because we are so drawn down and this is technology, this is medicine, this is um, wonders and things like that. But I think that's the beauty behind a witch too. They believe that they can manifest things and really put their heart and soul into gaining that. And of course that goes into, well, you're just manifesting. Um, I think it was the Da Vinci Code, I want to say. Don't quote me on that. But <laughs> that, <laughs> that they sent and they looked at a dollar and they were like every day and they're like, I'm going to make a million dollars. I'm going to make a million dollars. And eventually they became a millionaire. If you put something out so much in the atmosphere, you're going to attract it because that's where your mind's going to go. Being a witch, you're automatically thinking, okay, that's manifesting. I'm going to be doing like a different like moments with myself. I'm going to be putting different herbs, candle work, all this stuff to get what you want. And that's, you're bringing it into your your life and witchcraft to me it kind of you take control of your own life rather than just being like i hope it gets there you're putting it in the, out in the atmosphere um as well as like i said you just take for granted such as um jewelry like someone that's not connected to spirituality or witchcraft you go out there and you're like oh well i like this stone say it's a garnet or anything like that um garnet means different things to different people but it can also um mean that back in the day it was for blood flow I want to say and also like strength and there's love behind that so that very well can be like a weird stone divination like as in you're like I'm just craving this stone right now in a like jewelry set but we've taken the magic out of society so many times that you don't recognize you already have these tendencies hmm. yeah that's a good point and it's it it made me think of you know intention and and how you can take you know any any item it could be anything from a, a cross to a, a stone a crystal a, an, a, any kind of item of clothing uh, if it's something that you put intention into like this is a, oh i'm going to use this to do xyz right well there's levi hi buddy sorry <laughs> hey levi <laughs> and um <laughs> hi, and and you you put a certain intention into it it's, that becomes a talisman it, that get, it imbues that thing with power for you um and I, it's it's something that i think science has a hard time with because it's not something that they can like you can't charge a stone with reiki and then put it in a laboratory and they're gonna go oh well, it's got 87 reiki units in it or whatever like it's not this measurable thing and i think it's 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 in a way like magic is kind of subjective in a way like it works when it works for who it works for. And it's not the, like this, like there's nobody going outside and like blotting out the sun with magic or doing anything crazy like that. It doesn't work like that. I think it's, it's, it's like a, what am I trying to say with in, in, intention? It's like a, well, it's on your intention and those things, those crystals, those oils and, and other, you know, yeah. stuff that you, you may wear crosses or whatever. It doesn't work unless you believe in it. But, so it's kind of like that your intention. <laughs> Yeah, and, and when we set intentions to what we're doing, because uh, what we do is practical magic and practical magic is very successful because when we're manifesting, we're keeping the thought 
at the forefront of our mind. And so everything that we're doing when we get up in the morning, if we want that raise uh, at work, we keep that in mind. And so our performance, we're going to focus more on our performance. We're going to do what we need to do, get the right skill set, whatever we need to do in order to make that man manifestation a reality. Hmm. Yeah, that makes, makes sense. sense. Yeah. Yeah, that does. It makes a lot of sense. And you know, when it, and going back to the medicine and the magic and the se whole separation of that, uh, it's something I realized today when I was rewatching your film is basically like folk magic, if you want to call it that, herbal healing, witchcraft, all those sort of things were, I mean, basically were still sort of, I mean, they were, they were fractured, but really until like the sort of Rockefeller healthcare system came about, that's really what sort of splintered off actual healing from, you know, from what the establishment, if you want to call it that, you know, basically said, okay, from moving forward, this is medicine, this is quackery, you know, and it sort of just fractured everything. And, uh, and, and that's a relatively recent thing. I mean, that's, you know, 20th century kind of thing. Um, but it, I mean, until very recently was all sort of the same thing. And it's crazy how, and it's ironic how herbal medicine was, was used by, you know, big pharmaceutical companies. They would take the, the herbs and stuff like that, that witches, if you want to call it, or herbal healers, whatever would use directly. And now they're being put into pills or being put into, you know, this, you know, uh, establishment accepted add, versions of add chemicals and added chemicals and, you know, all kinds of byproducts and, and whatever to make it, you know, able to be mass produced, you know, whereas like a healer in a village would have come to the, you know, someone sick in the village would come to the healer and it would be, you know, oh, I have this and this and this symptoms and they would know which plants to use and they would just use it directly and mix that tincture or that potion, that tea, whatever it was for that person, they would take it and they would get better. Um, it's, it's just kind of weird how that was like just separated, but yet still the essences of those plants are still being used in, in, in medicines everywhere. It's, it's wild. There's, um, there's an actual story and I forget the doctor's name now, but he noticed that uh, there was a, an herbalist or they would have called her a wise woman in his village. And she would come and I can't remember uh, the herb that she was using, but he noticed that she was having really good results. And the patients uh, were all, you know, suffering with congestive heart failure. And, uh, and so uh, he noticed this and he started recording it. And then he asked her, what do you use? And so the the sweet little herbalist woman is now lost in the annals of history, but his name is written down. And I, I will tell you that when we talk about, you know, when we talk about witchcraft or, you know, or healing, uh, natural healing, um, often people give so much more credits to like something that falls under medicine. And yet, if you look at medicine, it itself, you know, at one point was quackery because, um, you know, and, and uh, of course, the reason I mention that is they, they pride themselves so much on this whole idea of science, of, of, you know, an analysis of data that it has nothing to do with your feelings. And, um, you know, going back to midwifery, I mean, back in the day when, when midwives were the only people that would come and help a woman give birth and she she could, and they were women, of course, women helping women. And so they would birth these children. Well, all of a sudden, <clears throat> we had this passing, and I don't mean to make this a female versus male thing, but when the transition was happening, it certainly was. And so men began to do this, and when, uh, you know, to deliver babies, and the, the rate of death among women, you know, for both themselves and their children just skyrocketed. And part of the reason was like some of the people who were, who were kind of going into this business, so to speak, were butchers, the town butcher. And so he would actually use the same tools, the same, you know, dirty tools that he used in his business 
on these women. And so there was this huge uptick in sepsis uh, in what they used to call child um, child death dead, uh, death. Uh, among women. So, you know, every, every, every practice, whether it's science or magic, begins somewhere. And you have to learn from your mistakes. And, you know, science has done it. And herbalists, you know, midwives, uh, uh, witches have done it. And it's not only just um, the witchcraft and the granny women culture and things like that. If you look through medicine, sadly, and it, like, a lot of minorities and things like that have been overlooked to their contributions to any magic or any discoveries in that. I even think that there was, um, don't like, like I said, don't quote me. I work in a factory guys. I took history a few times in college, but you know, <laughs> um, one, but I love the weird odd facts. Um, but they would actually inject different diseases to study it, to see how it would work. So you never get the behind the scenes and a lot of the different medical histories have a pretty, rough history that a lot of people didn't get credit how they deserve to get credit so it's it's not just the witches but you know just say <laughs> what were you saying beth because i think you're on mute I think you're on. Maybe if I do this. I hear you. We can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Uh, got you now. I don't know. I, I'm just sitting here. He's got all the controls. There we go. Oh, that was weird. <laughs> oh, yeah. So I worked OBGYN for 20 years. And I know I know that story that you were saying how, you know, a lot of women, you know, they would die during childbirth and children, you know, because they didn't even have gloves back then. So they wouldn't, you know, they would get, you know, infected and disease and then they would die that way. They got all in there with everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just imagine seeing that now. If you just no. have somebody like, let me wipe this off for a minute, and then they go right through. <laughs> yeah, let me shower. Let me shower off. Your amniotic fluid went everywhere. Let me, <laughs> let me let me get right back to you. <laughs> and yeah. then they would go home, and it, like they would be like, it was a rough day, and you just see things on their hands because you know they probably didn't wash their hands a whole lot. <laughs> I mean, oh god. Well, King Henry the Eighth said that he washed his hands three times in his lifetime. Let that sing in. Well, they they saw that they 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 thought that bathing actually caused you to die or have yeah. diseases. Oh. And the the cleanest people during that time were your little peasant people. <laughs> God, yes, God. that's true. Wow. When did that flip? Because you remember like in the Western times, they had to pay like a quarter to bathe or something like that. I don't know the that's number. Right. But like when did it flip? <laughs> they're like, the poor people are washing so much, you know? <laughs> I don't know. Like, well, I, I, well, the yes. I can of bathing. I want to learn this now. <laughs> when did it become a popular thing? To some, it's still not popular. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. That is true. <laughs> yeah, that is true. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's to each his own. I know. Oh, my God. But mm -mm. What yeah. I did learn how um, zoos become about, and this is ridiculous. I read idiotic facts. I don't know if it's because I'm excited <laughs> one day when I get drunk I'm or just <laughs> motor. I'm not drunk. I get to put out this useless knowledge to somebody. But zoos were actually from a lot of rich people would have these zoos, right? So then whenever they would just give up on these animals, the peasants thought, well, wait a minute, this will be a good idea to, hey, charge somebody to like look at these animals, right? So that's where the zoo came in. Not to mention, you can also pay extra to feed your animals to the lions. <laughs> Back in the day, I'm telling you, I can't remember the quote because I'm telling you, I put all this useless knowledge in there. But um, look up the history of zoos. And that was yeah. like an exciting thing to feed your animal to the, you know, the zoos. Wow. But 
And I will mention something about the zoos back in the day, since you mentioned it. During the French Revolution, they said there wasn't one rat left in the sewers of Paris because they were eating everything. It's like pets, dogs, animals that they could find right. uh, like right. that, uh, what we would call exotic animals. I mean, yeah, interesting. Talking about pests, I will let you guys know, this past weekend, I went to Jungle Gyms, right? There's everything in there. If you want to buy it, I'm pretty sure it's there. So I go to Jungle <laughs> Gems at Ohio. And, like, I always like trying reasonable. I mind you guys, reasonable, because there's some things I'm not going to eat. Like, random, odd food, right? So my friends were like, hey, look, there's this, um, like, this section that has, like, chocolate-covered crickets on it. And I'm like, I eat a chocolate-covered tr- cricket or whatever. <laughs> and, like, silkworms. And then there was a cricket... Uh, protein bar right so I was like okay yeah I want to try that now mind you I'm thinking like I'm gonna tell you how much I paid for these crickets it was like eight, <laughs> <laughs> $8. $8.99 for these chocolate covered cr- crickets right so I'm like okay I, you know I'm thinking I'm gonna get me like a Walmart plastic container full of crickets for <laughs> surely but no it was a lovely little satchel a little bag and then not only did they potato chip screw me out of those crickets they put a bag inside of the bag and i only got like five crickets so i said to my friend at work i said surely chocolate is not that expensive and surely they could have found some more crickets i'm just saying like how did crickets get so expensive did you eat the crickets oh yeah they were not bad the the cricket protein lemon flavored bar was not good and that was cheaper so apparently i'm paying for flavor and all, <laughs> honestly, they were pretty good i mean i'd eat them again like yeah. but not 8.99 i know you like i've seen a crap load of crickets i'm running on a gold mine right now if i could just catch one <laughs> and put some chocolate on it <laughs> but it, it could be comes. free i'm telling you i'm i'm like come on now like i think it was um like in I'm not sure which culture it was. And I'm like, surely they have a lot more bugs over there. They could put some chocolate on for cheaper. But <laughs> I, it was really nice. It was like a little fluffy like type thing. Kind of like um, Rice Krispies a little bit. That consists okay. with chocolate on it. Yeah. Not it bad. Was, it was delightful. Yeah. It wasn't as bad as I thought. It wasn't like any moisture or anything. So it was crunchy. It was worth it. Yeah. There you go. I it love worth it. it was I worth love it. it. Yeah. <laughs> Ashley's always the lighter one. She's she is well, I'm, she's got timing, comedic timing like nobody's oh, business. We that. love her, and I'm I'm the darker one, you know. So I'm gonna take you somewhere dark on this. I'm <laughs> since you, since, well, there we since, go. Since, since you already mentioned the crickets, uh, you know we're about to get hit with trillions of cicadas this year. Yes, now I, I now I will tell you all. Now back in the day, our grannies. And our, you know, our grandpas, they would watch for signs and omens. I mean, it talks about it, you know, in the holy book, as they say. And um, and if you look at the the signs and omens that we're seeing right now, this is the first time these things are going to rise out of the ground in this kind of number, according to what I'm reading, in the last 200 years. Then we have the devil comet that is going to be actually visible at the same time that we have a total lunar eclipse. So, you know, in magic, we, we have a saying, and it's as above as below. So you look for signs in heaven to see what's going to manifest in the earth. And it's really interesting because um, that is even even if you're a Christian, there are signs in heaven that you look for, such as, you know, when the seven seals open or the seals are open and, you know, the uh, God's trumpet is is sounded and they start looking around for, you know, messages, omens, signs that will tell them that they are approaching the end times or at least the time of, uh, you know, the, the book of that the book of Revelation um lays out so it's an interesting time it really is all i 
I think about that is all over TikTok, I know I'm on the tickety talks, is number one, <laughs> should I pay my car payment? <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm just saying, if I'm going to have a good time, I could take that money and have a better good time. I'm with, you. I'm, with time. You. I'm with you, Ashley. I'm with you. <laughs> and second off, I got to buy me a shitload of chocolate because if I could kick some of the bugs, I'm going to be a millionaire. <laughs> okay. And I'll drizzle some chocolate on all them acadas, cicadas. Oh, that would be a good business. I'm it's telling okay. you, out there, you're going to see me crazy. Mm-hmm. Dripping chocolate. <laughs> there you, you running, go. I can see you running through the field. So I'm I can catch it. Yeah. Don't be <laughs> on my face, crawling, screaming, that scream. <laughs> I don't know. I've got, I've got a roasting or something. i got to look into this business. Just, yeah, bring your grill in a big I'll, be, I'll be out there. I'll be having a great time. Be yeah, like, I, I, I know you would. I know it. That's yeah. funny. I'm like, I'm preparing for the end of times. I've skipped my car payment, but all that money towards fine chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> not bring it to yeah. <laughs> That's too funny. I, I believe you, though. I believe oh, yeah. in me, too. It's yeah. going to happen. <laughs> It's going to happen, yes. Are you guys doing anything special for the Eclipse or anything that's coming forward about that? I was probably going to sacrifice a couple of dogs. Oh, yeah. Okay. You know, they don't have those zoos. I know. She's like, don't you do that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Don't you do that to our puppy. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe hide in the bunker. I don't know. Yeah. That's, a, that's a good plan. We, I don't know if you've heard this, but there's like supposedly somewhere where the National Guard is being deployed for the Eclipse. I'm like, what? Well, there, Why? it's a state of emergency in New York and in Texas because they fall right under the the line of totality, uh, totality, and they're afraid that there's going to be so many people rushing in that they their uh, mm. their uh, you know water their you know their structure their infrastructure may not be able to support it. And uh, wow. I'm going. Uh, my husband and I are actually going to New York. Um, on Wednesday, uh, his sister lives up there, and I'm going. I want to film this uh, for our documentary. Oh, that'll be so awesome! Oh, that's yeah, so awesome. Fun. Nice. I'm so just out can't... there like Matthew McConaughey, just trying to live, man. L I V I. I'm just trying to make it through. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Yeah, yeah. That, that's what you got to do. Yeah. So, uh, I guess you can't bust out your tattoo, huh? Oh, oh, my. Well, uh, I guess, yeah, this is kind of what I wanted. Because I wanted to touch on oh. uh, some of the stuff that, that you ladies talked about in, in Salem, season, season of yeah. the Witch. She has a she has a tattoo dedicated to the Ooh. Salem Witches. There you go. There you go. Oh, I love that. Yeah. That's nice. That's very go. nice. Oh, that's so sweet. Yeah. yeah. You know, I consider myself a witch. Not as probably as advanced as you guys are. I'm... I don't know if I was a born witch, but um, that's one of the questions I wanted to ask you guys. So there's, you know, you mentioned in the movie. This is the question that got me in trouble. Remember? (laughs) (laughs) I'm sorry. Well, (laughs) there's. It's her moment. It's her moment. It's my moment to make up for it. (laughs) Well, I was just at, no, I was asking because, you know, there's, you said, um, and I just, and, and. Cause you know, um, you guys know what I do. Well, well, Ashley knows what I do. I'm a medium. So I, and I've been, you know, take, I took uh, a Wiccan class and you know, the, so the question I was like, so the difference between Wiccan witchcraft and, and pagan. And then I also, some people say, oh, we well, have to take all these classes and do all this stuff. You just can't, um, start a coven without you taking all these classes and doing this and that. Mm-hmm. So I know that you guys said you're, you're born, which is, and I believe you cause I, I, well, I know Ashley very well and Misty, I know you guys and I love you and I totally believe in you and this, and you know, so I was just wondering how you guys feel on that question. You know, like about, can you just, you're, you're born with it and you can just develop it and just start practicing it because that's how I did with my being a media psychic medium. That's what I just, you know what I mean? You just do it. Not that you can't learn and take more classes. Cause I've, right. I've, I did take classes. I've studied from a lot of people, but I do feel like it is within you and then you can like read or learn to bring it out. So what do you guys feel about that? Well, uh, if you don't mind, uh, this is my time to make it right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> let, let let me explain. I said that which you know 
really powerful witches are, the bo are born. And I really believe, I do believe that. But that doesn't mean that you start practicing out of the womb. You can be called to this at any time in your life. There's an old saying, you know, once a witch, always a witch. And I do say this, and I hold to this. I say that, and it's true, that you can learn aspects of the craft, but it's like, you know, Venus and Serena Williams were, were you know, they, they from the very beginning were trained to be premier world female tennis champions. And that's exactly what they were. They had an innate ability to do that. And so, you know, it, it's like playing tennis. Most people can pick up a racket and swing at a ball but you're still going to have those that simply have an innate ability to manifest reality uh, that may be in some ways uh, you know, more powerful than someone who doesn't have that innate ability. It doesn't mean that one cannot learn aspects of the craft. And if you're called to it, then I, oh, I, I truly believe that you were a witch you know, from, from the beginning. You just weren't called called to it until later in life okay understood yeah hmm. mine on adding on to what pat is and then be careful is, ashley I <laughs> <laughs> I to go to her house and burn it down not mine. <laughs> but no like to add on to pat first like um it made i'm gonna blame it on the edit no i'm gonna play but anyways it's um, Pat, it, it, it seemed like Pat was saying either you were born into a coven or you're nothing, right? That it made it seem like that. But that, what she was saying is everybody has that little sparkle in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Like some might have a brighter light than other ones. Um, and me and Misty were just talking about this, um, before she had to go, it was that, that now before me and Misty came out of this closet, um, I'm going to tell you, I, I was not from the beginning like, I am a witch. I absolutely am. Here's my broom. Here's my hat. Blah, blah, blah. You know, I wasn't. Um, I heavily sit and I was, and I always tell the story about Pat and I have a story about Beth too, but um, that me and Misty were in the paranormal. We noticed coincidences. Our family um, was German Baptist. And they had little quirks and coincidences and we believed in superstition, right? So we lived on this little farm and we're in the middle of nowhere. And it's not like we had witches around us or anything like that. And I would do weird little shit, like give Pat dirt for no damn reason. I'm like, <laughs> Here you go, Pat. and like Pat started hanging around us and she was like, they're gifted. And she would send her daughter with us and be like, go, go hang out with them. They're gifted. And we're like, no, we're not. We're just over here, you know, doing this and the other. And uh, Pat was always the one that was always like, hold on, something's different about them. We didn't know it. Like I said, I'm weird talking to goats and like fixing animals. And I'm thinking I'm, everybody has these little things, right? So then Pat brought us out of that closet. Now, Pat was always, she was in the witchy atmosphere. Now, I, well, I guess I could out Pat right now. When I talk to myself, I get nervous like I'm out and Pat or something. But <laughs> anyway, I think she's out, guys. But So Pat invited us to the circle. And I always tell the story that when we went to the circle, we're like, ah, we're cool, man. We'll show up, whatever, you know. And she was doing a ritual and things like that. And we're sitting there. And I was just excited. These men, these men were washing my feet, you know. And I was just like, oh, yeah, whoop, this nice. And we sat on the, <laughs> I guess it was a visitor's couch. I'm not sure, but we were sitting on the visitor's couch and they were all like, you know, they were giving thanks and things like that. And they were like, what are you thankful for? And I think Pat said the Connor sisters and they all in unison because they were in the moment snapped over and looked at me and Misty and we're like, and I looked at Missy and I was like, you stay on the Jesus train. You hear me? <laughs> I was like, and I'm sitting here in a witch's circle on the visitor couch, getting my feet washed. And I'm like, you say it. Because uh, you don't under, like, there's so many misconceptions with witchcraft that you just think as soon as you are over there on that witch side, you're signing your life away to the worst entity ever. And it's just all this bad stuff when that's not how it is. Um, 
so me and Misty, we would always do goofy stuff. Like we were like, you know, always had tarot cards and then we'd hide them. We'd get scared that, you know, the devil was after us. So we'd throw them in the trash and I'd get them out when Misty threw it. And it was stupid things like that. So one time we knew something was different because my mom and dad, we live on a farm. We have to drive past my mom and dad's. There's so many different streets to this farm. So we drive past and like, we were like, Hey mom, we're going to the shell hill and we're going to do some witchcraft. She's like, all right, just don't wake up your daddy. And we're like, <laughs> Why is that girl? you know, so we drive up here and we're doing that. And then we come back down. My mom was always like, she loved witches and stuff like that. Like the, she would always say we were like the two little practical, magical ones, practical magic. Oh, that movie. But love anyway, that movie. yeah, love that movie. Best thing ever. God, Misty is so, Sandra Bullock and I'm out there a disaster but <laughs> so she, she would always be okay with witch, witches and witchcraft and coming from the south that's a big no-no especially like in the country so we never really I always told Misty maybe we're too, too trashy to be classy and too classy to be trashy around this joint because it's like we never fit in with anybody and it wasn't until we started writing the book our dad came forward and said yeah you're yeah that's in our line and I'm like why did you not tell me this is in my bloodline this whole time, you know? And it was actually, uh, my grandmother was a wart remover and uh, that it was actually in our lineage, but we, it wasn't like when we were born, it was some big, like everybody's in cloaks. Everybody's like, it wasn't like that. We grew up a normal life and we were doing weird quirky shit. Everybody else knew we were weird, but I didn't know. I thought I was normal. Um, but and Pat picked us up and there, she was like, y'all are, y'all are witches. And Beth, you actually said the same thing to us. One time you looked over and you were like, you know, y'all are witches, right? And we're like, no, we're not. We're still on the Jesus train. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is a really big misconception because when you look at um, Wiccan, that one is an organized religion. And that one is an intimidating because when they are around and they're lovely people and I love them and I have nothing against you. It's just my spirituality is different. They do believe that you're supposed to study for a year and you're supposed to have, you're supposed to be invited in a coven. The perfect coven is 13 and things like that. They have more regimen and rules. Um, Appalachian witchcraft was about survival. You just learn so many different things because your goal was to keep your person or your animal alive to make it through the next day. It wasn't, um, well, let me follow these rules. Let me follow this. It was more free flowing. Um, and the reason why you don't, there are, I'm not going to say there's not good books or anything like that, that does have which like Appalachian witchcraft, but it was whatever was available is what you used. So maybe one time you would use a jar, maybe another time you would use a cup. Because that was just what was available. Because we're poor as shit. That's it. <laughs> I wanted to end on the truth. The poor as shit. Yeah. yeah. Now, everybody has the ability to be a witch. It's really, like Pat was saying, it's it's kind of like your soul is coming home and recognizing this is in your your past. Either it's past lives or like your bloodline and things like that. I'm backing you up, Pat, in a long roundabout way. Understood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now that makes more sense to me. I'm like, well, I don't think I need to go to score class for a year because to do that, you know, um, I agree with what you guys, how you guys are. And I could be an Appalachian witch, but I, I live in New Jersey. So maybe I am one, but I live in New Jersey. <laughs> I can relate to you guys more than the Wiccan way of learning to where, yeah, you have to take uh, 101 and then 102 it's like two or three years and I'm like wait a minute I'm already doing this stuff you know yeah. so it's like I just love what you're doing and you guys are so honest and truthful you wear your heart on your sleeve and I you know it's just I totally love you and believe in you and trust you and I think you're all amazing thank you so much once person just got in touch with me and misty and they were from australia and she was like um i saw your documentary um i really resonate with you guys misty just read this to me today and she was like um i know i'm not from appalachian but i really resonate with that and i think it's because we take the culture of country and <laughs> put it into witchcraft because in the country like i can't tell you how many times i'm just like hey that guy needs help i gotta go help him because that's just how you're raised because sometimes you don't understand the struggle behind that. So I think it's our weird Southern hospitality, hospitality, <laughs> hospitality that translate over into witchcraft. And we pretty much will help anybody if they're nice and that like, we feel like they're a good person. Um, I, I, before I came out as an Appalachian witch would say I was eclectic 
because that gave me a broad term to understand what I liked the most and what was my speciality. Because once you go into a certain niche, then you have different expectations. Kind of like, um, I do like bones and things like that. But when you say you're a bone witch, then it seems like the only thing you use is bones. So you have to know everything about bones. And if you say that you're a herbologist or whichever, like you're into herbs, then it's like everyone expects for you to know what every green piece of herb is. And that's that's honestly impossible for you to know everything about everything. And I encourage, I even still learn things new. I know I'm out there learning, guys. But <laughs> I I think that you can learn something from every culture and every like different venue. Like the, the day you stop learning is the day that you're stupid to be honest like in witchcraft you can always learn so much stuff and the internet is the best and worst thing for this so yeah you're always learning and growing we never master any of this so yeah i agree yep yeah you have taken i mean countless classes from because i'm learning like from the uk from um ireland like i I like just all different mentors because you know what i don't i don't have all the answers I, i don't know everything but i just try to learn as much as i can from everybody that's what that's what I do, you know. <laughs> oh, that's the best way to be, you know, because it's like you can relate to everybody. Like, that's something that we kind of strive to do to relate to anybody coming forward. They have any kind of deity or anything that they believe in. Um, I believe there's truth in everything. So that's something that we like to give back, as in um, we might not know a lot about this culture, but we want them to feel at home and that, like to be able to, you know, talk to each other on a equal ground, you know? So, yeah, you, and, and you guys are, that's what you do. You guys, and that's what you put out. You guys are very comforting to me, you know? Aww. So just saying, Pat, you hear that, that we're comforting. Uh, Pat, you're comforting. I hear that. <laughs> you're part of it, Pat. <laughs> <laughs> Especially after watching your video, your movie, you know, I was like, oh, I can't wait to meet Pat. She's awesome. (laughs) I was really happy to meet you, too. I mean, the girls are really uh, uh, positive about you guys. So, (laughs) yeah, the feeling's mutual. Yeah, I I met the Connor sisters in like, (laughs) I'm thinking like 2016, 2015, 2016, somewhere around there. I believe at Penhurst. God, uh, I um, love you, but we gotta stop putting up these numbers. They're gonna know. <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna know. Gosh. <laughs> I gotta stop picking this up now and put my wigs on. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, just that you ladies had such an air. You just came like sashaying in and just like took over the whole room, and everybody was like, "Who the hell are these ladies?" <laughs> it was wild. Oh, sashaying. Yeah, oh, sashaying. You know? Dress, like dress, dress to the tees, you know. But, oh yeah. Um. But you're honest, and you know what we what you, what you put out. Like you wear your heart on your sleeve, and you're very truthful and honest. And that's what I love about you. Maybe yeah. if someone don't like that. That's their problem. But I I yeah. love everything about you guys. I just think you're amazing. And oh, and we love you guys so much. Can't say enough. Always- you know, it's always you hold a special place in our heart. And I'm always like, oh yeah, Beth. I was so upset. I did not get to go to the one party. What Which was it? That, that one. Uh, what? I wasn't there, and you and Misty were, though. I can't where, where was this at? I think it was in Virginia. Was it in Virginia? I think Steve oh, Hill was there. Oh, my gosh. Yes, so yeah. many. Paravation. Okay. Oh, Paravation. <gasps> I think Paravation. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. I wasn't yes. yeah, that yeah, one. Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't that one. I was like, dang it, Beth was there. I wanted to see her. So <laughs> but you you live close by, right? You were like an hour away. Misty was saying you guys live close to there. They're I'm close. Not but do we do? Yeah, she, 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 she said you guys were close from there, and well, that's I, I was, I was like, the well, one that ran. Yeah, I was like, well, let's go. Let's take a drive and go see Ashley then. I have a factory job, and once I'm in that factory, I smell and look terrible. <laughs> that's I'm okay. Like, I like to pretend like nobody recognizes. Me. I'm like the the witchy Hannah Montana or something. <laughs> like I'm in the factory, and I'm like this one time. I crap you not now. All you fellers, you you turn off this speaker right now. That if you're sick, <laughs> but one time I was like checking on my coworker, which he's like two years away from like retiring. And God, I love that man, but he's probably like, God, please, I can't get here soon enough. I was like, Alan, I think that our machines are messing up because I took away our good luck charm. I haven't shaved my armpits in a good while, and I shaved them last night. <laughs> 
<laughs> so that's what you guys got when I don't show up to these conventions. Oh, that's so, yeah. oh, that's that's awesome. That's funny. I love that. That's classy. Yeah. <laughs> I always I say know. they're they're the comedy duo and I'm the straight man. <laughs> I don't know. Oh shoot. Life yeah. in general sometimes is funny. I'm like, good gosh, but <laughs> it, it it it's I just love seeing everybody and it becomes a big family, you know, outside and doing things like that. So yeah. Uh, and I always hold a very dear heart, like little space in my heart for you guys. And I love you guys. It's been so many years and I'm like, I never get to be around them enough. Um, right. And we feel the same way about you. I, I, I love you guys. And I speak very highly of you guys because you just hold a special place in my heart too, because you're genuine, true friends. You're, you know, I just can't say enough good words about y- you guys. I just love you guys. I tell yeah. people, I'm like, guys. I am so painfully honest. I could have made it a lot further in life had I not been. (laughs) And and it's a bad I agree. The psychological part of that is if you're lying, then you would absolutely lie about telling the truth. But I'm like, I'm really honest, guys. It's bad. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. No, it's good. It's good. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I remember we... We investigated the Bel Air house with the with oh, the Connor remember? sisters and the, and you guys all had those like animal pajamas on. <laughs> oh yeah, remember? those are delightful. I still have them. I'm looking <laughs> in the closet right now. I'm like, man, I need to bring those back out. Once it gets cold weather, so it's like I had this one friend and I was doing readings and they were like, well, we know the time's up when Ashley puts on her <laughs> onesies and I just zip up the onesie like because you guys know we all try to dress really nicely and presentable and then I'll just come out with a onesie or sweatpants and they're like i don't understand how you can look like steven tyler at one moment and then you're like really glamorous at the next i'm like yep that's right (laughs) (laughs) yep i'll show up in a robe and everything you know i ain't doing nothing then (laughs) that's okay just means you're well-rounded you know you can dress up but then you can dress down oh (laughs) (laughs) his name is levi He's he's a rescue Oh, so they're the best dogs. Yeah. Rescue dogs. He loves it in the studio. Oh, little ham. <laughs> My little guy, I had to put him in another room because I'm like, man, and Pat, she got her too, too. Okay. I got yeah. a bigger one and then I got a wiener dog that I paid too much for, but <laughs> good gosh. <laughs> you love them. I do. It's like a little baby, man. Once yeah. they get a certain size and you could hold them, that little thing's pampered. <laughs> oh, he, yeah. the, he's spoiled that's why he keeps trying to get on our laps because he's spoiled but you love him no yeah. you, you you met the connor sisters a, a much earlier than i did and yeah it was gettysburg it, that's where it she was a, said that gettysburg. Yeah. Gettysburg, gettysburg gettysburg right ashley gettysburg yeah yep. yeah we were in the basement together doing readings remember yeah dude gosh it's so hard like People will be like, well, where all have you been? And I'm still convinced I've been to Chicago, even though I know I haven't been. I'm directionally challenged, <laughs> and, and I can't count worth crap. I can't. Yeah. I'm terrible. <laughs> like, I'm dyscalculus. Who would have known? Like, who knew? <laughs> I think you have to be some sort of, like, Misty's dyslexic, so she can't read, like, <laughs> notes. One time yeah. we were writing down spring break, like, because we were in college together. She wrote spring bread. <laughs> Uh, I think it helps if you have some sort of odd little personality, like quirk like that. You have to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you have to like, make fun of yourself and just en- enjoy yeah. life and laugh. Oh, yeah. So what's next for you guys? Yeah, I was just going to say, what's this next uh, documentary coming up? Can, you know, what can you tease us with uh, with some stuff here? Like, what's uh, what's this going to be about? That well, is the- that's well it's it's all of ours but um the a documentary is called there's magic in the mountains and it's about appalachian granny witches uh appalachian granny women slash uh because they never called themselves that that's what their neighbor might call them because they they might uh often have the second sight most of them have the ability to heal and still uh you know so many of them were midwives i mean they were the people that people went to to be healed in some way. And uh, so my my granny was a, and great granny and great, great granny were Appalachian uh, uh, granny women. I know the Connors were too. And so what I'm doing is I'm interviewing the descendants of Appalachian granny women 
Uh, and then what I want to do is talk about the women, you know, how they help their community. Were they healers? Were, were they, uh, you know, psychics? And then also, do they have any gifts that were handed down to them from these women? Um, Appalachian granny women were also known as the mystics of the mountains. So, <clears throat> so that's that's the core of what this is about. It's a passion project because so many stories about these women are getting lost in time. So I want to preserve some of those. Very nice. That sounds awesome. It it like honestly when <clears throat> I came forward to be any kind of like witch and things like that, I took the term witch, right? So then of course they're like, well, What kind of witch are you? And I told you I went to the eclectic witch. I didn't know there was a granny woman. I thought you were just supposed to be witch. That's it. Period. But back in our day, actually, when I found out that I have the lineage of it, because I mean that's not something our family talks about. It was kind of more secret secretive. Sure. Um, it was, yeah, we went by healers and granny women because if you came forward to say you're a witch back in that time they would have tarred and feathered you and you would have been the outcast of the community so you couldn't come forth to say that you were a witch and you'll notice a lot of the appalachian culture will actually use bible verses that's something that we got clocked on before too as in if you're a granny witch or appalachian why are you not using bible verses I do not because I I want to be able, like I said, to give forth to everybody that has this history, like as it not history, but has the interest in witchcraft. And I don't want to push my not, I'm religious. I believe in a higher power. But if they have another deity, I don't put like, you know, Bible verses in that um, with this documentary with Pat coming forward. It is showing the back root working of this and it's showing the history and the culture like she was saying that sometimes gets lost because i didn't even know what a granny witch was um i didn't know that was a small term because i found this side path and realized it was in my culture background um pat came forward to say yeah granny women i'm like i am not gonna be called granny <laughs> I, I was gonna hurt my age so right there that was a breakdown like it wasn't till here recently you hear this broad term so pat's really going back and showing you the real ones that are from these mountains that still go by this culture i so. love that yeah that's amazing yeah that's awesome like, like, pat is uh, the one that brought us into this like i said so She's like, come on, come on, take us little breadcrumbs, come on. And uh, like I said, the granny women's and things like that in these Appalachian mountains were overlooked. Because I got to be honest, um, me and Misty just got internet like two years ago, maybe. Wow. So we were wow. culturally cut off. I mean, if you saw any of our lives, we were driving to a, a truck stop. Yes, yes, you were in the car. <laughs> That's right. That's right. I mean, yes. Yeah. I haven't seen those in a while. I because we got the internet. <laughs> <laughs> we did not have high speed internet. Oh, so wow. that is a struggle in the mountains as well. Um, that they believe that because of our slowness, and honestly, like Virginia should have like faster internet because you know we have so much more government government stuff here, and uh, certain people say it's actually an internet hub. We are in between New York and Florida. So a lot of like sex trafficking people get freaked out about here because we're the central point. So you would expect us to have better internet and better things like that. But that is a thing with the Appalachian Americans as in we're kind of cut off from technology. So we we're considered um, ill-educated and that is actually a stigmata about Appalachian Americans um, that, you know, we're kind of dumb, but we were cut off from society. We're not, it's kind of like asking, um, how far can a fish climb that whole concept? Um, we may be smart in other things, but it was very common for our time frame to, um, just stop going to school because you have to take care of children. Um, you have to work the lands. You might as well go get a job in a factory or go get a job to take care of your families. And that is where the granny women as well came forward they weren't always old um so this documentary i'm incredibly excited about it because pat is putting her heart and soul into this and it's through the eyes of a granny woman me too i can't wait to watch it i'm, I'm yeah. i know it's going to be amazing so that, i'm really excited when, when do you expect that to come out pat uh, <clears throat> we're hoping to premiere it in fall of 2025 nice hmm. mm -hmm. Sure, we're awesome. getting excited. I know yeah. I'm excited about it coming out. 
Me too. Like we I did all the... Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, because the, I mean, season of the witch was excellent. I mean, I the, watched it three times. The production already. value was awesome. The cinematography <laughs> was great. Amazing. I love it. Now that that is T Lee uh, of T Lee Productions. He was the cinematographer on on that uh, particular production, and he's just got such a brilliant eye. I mean, uh, and he is also uh, he's either a recent graduate or he's getting ready to graduate graduate from the LA School of uh, Cinematography or Film, and uh, and so he's just just a brilliant cinematographer. Awesome. Yeah, it was it was made nice and it you know it was just amazing and it oh, yeah. it helps knowing, you know, a couple of the people that were in it. <laughs> but so um what do you, what do you guys have some advice for some people that are just starting out or that they want to become a witch or you know want to do witchcraft or what what kind of advice would you, would you have for someone just starting out? Pat, you go, go ahead. Oh, no, I was saying, you go ahead. On my screen, okay. you're, I was like, Ugh. Oh, there you go. Uh, my, just go with your heart. Uh, let yourself be led. This is a spiritual path. Uh, it, it really is a spiritual path. It's not about magic. It's about, uh, you know, finding, finding your center um, and your spiritual center. So that, that's what I would say. Just allow yourself to be led by spirit. Hmm. Very nice. Hmm. I got I got three suggestions. First, All right, Ashley, you go, girl. <laughs> um, first, don't. It's it's complicated because your raw emotions will make your spiritual or your spells more powerful. But don't ever do any spell work in anger, um, because that with anything even when you're talking to someone if you're heated and you're mad and you talk to someone there might be some things that you regret that happens or that you do um so don't go in there raw emotions like and not seeing the full picture give it a little bit time for your emotions to kind of calm down out of anger or anything like that like negative spell work um because like i said I might go out and drive a car and someone cuts me off and I'm like, you know what? Ugh. You know, and I'm so mad and you don't know what's happening in the other person's life in the full picture. You're only seeing this small tidbit. They could be speeding because there was an emergency and things like that. And it's just take a full look at the picture before you put bad intent out for anybody else. So you have that because there are retribution for any darker things that you do do. Um, I believe in protection. As in, if someone seeks out to do you harm, you can put more negativity towards them. I do believe in that. Um, but I don't believe in, oh, she's prettier than me. I hope she fails. You know, I don't believe in spell work like that. Um, well, I mean, it happens, but I don't, I don't, I don't want to do that. I have more of a cool comp collected. Also, um, love spells, I suggest putting it more open for the possibility, not necessarily saying, I want Timmy to love me right now. Timmy, Timmy, da, da, da. And it's this one specific guy because the atmosphere might want something better for you. And uh, it, no matter the feelings you have at that moment, um, just say, I want the love that's meant to be brought to me. Cause you don't ever want to like emotionally kidnap someone into loving you. <laughs> Cause well, that's going to rob you and yeah. the person you're supposed to be with or yeah, and poor Timmy, he don't want to be with you. Anymore. Yeah, you can't take, you can't take away someone's free will either. So you have to be specific Absolutely. when you do this work, right? Absolutely. When you do spell work, you know, because if if you're not specific, when you say, oh, you know, or oh, I want to find a job. Okay, you may get a job if you put that out, just that out there. You may get a job at McDonald's. Not that it's bad, but you know what I'm saying. You got to be specific when you're doing. Um, let, let, let me mention one thing though when it comes to to love spells <clears throat> divine energy knows what you need in your yeah. life and the person that you're supposed to be paired with i actually did a love spell that's how i got my husband who is an amazing human being and um and i simply asked to bring the person into my life that was supposed to be with me that was supposed to really complete my energy and two weeks later there he was and that's a that's a true story he had actually he's from arizona he spent his career in california and i mean i should not have met him but 
he appeared in my life. And to be honest, he was the only person I even uh, dated. I was divorced for three years before I even wanted to date because you should always have your energy grounded before you do any kind of outreach for another energy. Because if you don't, and you see it all the time, if somebody is not grounded themselves, then they get the worst kind of energy because that's their energy right now. You attract like attracts like. So, uh, you know, with love, just make it open. The divine energy knows what you need and what you, you know, what you want. Allow the right energy to come to you. Don't try to block it by saying, I want this, I want this, and I want this in terms of the heart. And I think it's because that's that's a real part of God energy, of divine energy, is love. You allow that energy to, to work for that magic for you so that you get what you need. May not It may not be necessarily what you think you want. Like, you know, we discussed... Uh, um, you know, having a specific name of a specific person. I mean, so many people do this, especially younger people, and they don't know that person. But divine energy does know that person. You see what I'm saying? There's so much more wisdom there that you can draw on than just your own, you know, uh, infatuation with another human being. That's hmm. great advice. Thank you. Yes, makes sense. Absolutely. What you were saying, yeah. Beth, with that, yes. like, as in, when you put out that you want a job, put, like, expectations of what kind of job you want. Just, mm -hmm. I mean, you might get a job. You might, you mm -hmm. know, but it might not be the one you were saying, like you were saying. Just kind of yeah. uh, have, a, I guess, standards. That's the hard part. That's the hardest part about that, <laughs> to be honest. You might be out there knowing what you want and try to get that to come to you, and then you're like, oh, I didn't mean it like that. <laughs> it's like, the universe is a drunken frat boy. You're like, <laughs> I want you to give me the next drink. From and Diet Coke. And they come back and give you a little shot glass of Diet Coke. Like, like, you're like, hey, hold on over here. You know, so it, it that is the complicatedness about magic and things like that. Um, the other point I wanted to make is make sure you... Any spell you do, make sure you do something. Don't just sit here and light a candle and be like, I want to make a million dollars. Bam. It's going to have just like that. What are you doing to make that difference? You got to put in like the effort to put that and then do spell work as in it's mm. going to push you where you're supposed to go as well as use reality over spirituality. And I always give this instant of like, um, I was at this one event. I'm not sure if people, other people were at this event as well. Um, at this event, there was a lot of heal healers there, as in, um, like, Reiki people, um, like, self-led healers and things like that. This woman, um, she had an episode of something, and um, they automatically thought it was a spiritual attack. Um, to me, me, me being a logical person, I'm like, holy shit, someone needs to call 911 right now. Who's calling 911? Yeah. And um, they were like, no, take your phones away. We're going to do this right now. And I had this person actually do a healing session on this person who was having a seizure. Um, and it like at, at the time, I'm like, why is nobody calling down? What are you doing? You took right. my phone. What are you doing? They're like, we're not videoing this. This is this is what's happening. And, and this and oh other. And I'm like, God. so later on, she realized she had a seizure. And I was like, are you serious? Something wow. really bad. So have logicality and reality over spirituality. Okay. Yes. And if there is medical attention needed, do not um, yes. to assist in the magic and any healing or things like that is to assist. Always go to a medical professional and always take your precautions to make sure they're safe. Regardless, I'm not saying that no one is strong enough to um, like help people or anything like that. It's just that, like I said, spirituality needs to be second second line of defense make sure you have reality and professionals as that so yes we're not we're not doctors you yes. know we're just yeah. like you said we assist in the healing absolutely i mean like i might take a look at your foot cut off but i'm not going to be able to put it back on <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> so yeah, that's exactly a good point. yeah yeah it's a good point reiki isn't going to reattach the foot necessarily absolutely. but there it was may assist in, in, in that person recovering it might help recovery take place take place quicker but the foot still needs to get put back on you need yeah. still need to stop the bleeding you know 
absolutely. So that I've actually read books about Reiki. I think everybody's Reiki, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm Reiki. He, Mike's Reiki. I'm Reiki. Yeah. I thought that. Okay. So I've read some books and I never thought of this, but um, they had the topic of can Reiki help with cancer and can Reiki, what are you supposed to do if your person is pregnant? What would happen with the Reiki of the child? And I was like, I never even considered those aspects. Um, with the cancer thing, they said, obviously, you get help and things like that. But also, it's the mindset of giving that positivity. And um, it was when you're a Reiki master and you're helping someone, the um, the feeling of if it's something that, how do I say this? Um, they come to you for assistance and the divine expects them to go a different direction as what you want them to be, if that makes sense. So it was more of you're helping them during their time and they're, you're easing them um, like as in healing what you can, but you have to accept the outcome of the real, you know, what's going on as well as the pregnant type thing. People were worried about how Reiki would affect pregnant people. And the cool part about that is it was that, you know, you asked if you're, it's okay that you heal the one person and if you can heal their child, but it was more of a positive outcome as in you're also healing the child, which makes sense. But I just, I don't know why I never thought of why someone would ask that question, I guess, you know? Yeah, it, hmm. it is an interesting question. Yeah. And that's why I think like it helps, like I was in the medical field for 20 years in OBGYN I work. So I think that helps when someone comes in and they, sometimes you're a psychiatrist when you do these readings or a therapist. So it's like, okay, you you really need to get other, you know, help, other other guidance because I'm not a doctor. I'm not a psychiatrist. I'm not a therapist. You you know, you just aid in the healing because I believe, and I'm, I'm sure you guys do too, you know, you treat the mind, body, soul, and the spirit, but that's, that's what how you know, you should treat everything for everything to heal, you know? So it's, it is something, but sometimes it comes down to a fine line, you know? Yep. I, I had people that, you know, were suicidal and you know what I, I, you know, you're not the person for that. They need to get further assistance, you know? And so it's, it is a fine line. You got to watch what you say, you know, like, I don't like to do necessarily, um, you know, relationships or like, you know, people are asking, well, is my pregnancy going to survive? I mean, listen, you may, you may say something, but you, do you really know that? That's, that's like, it's a fine line. And I don't like to necessarily answer those questions when I do healing or readings. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I will tell you there's there was a couple of places where, uh, you know, if you've got any uh, legal friends, they'll tell you not to give advice. And one is actually children. And the other one is, um, is anything dealing with finances and both of those make sense. Um, so anyway, just, just that, but I will tell you one time, even though I know this rule, I, um, I was at a public reading, a gallery reading, and this woman stood up and she had a, a young woman next to her and the young woman was kind of crying a little bit. And the mother said she was her mother and said that the doctors had told her that she will never have a, another child. Will she have one? Well, Pat not being channeled is not going to answer that because that can get you sued. It can, but all of a sudden, I heard it when everybody else heard it. I said, she will have another child. She will, the child will be a chubby baby with dark hair. And I was actually visiting my husband's uh, people back in Arizona, got off the, uh, the plane and she sent me a photograph of a little baby in its mother's arms. And she said, this is that chubby little baby with the dark hair. So if I'm channeled or if I receive a message I know that that's a hundred percent and I will deliver the message. But if, if I'm trying to pull energy and you know what I mean by that, I'm pulling yes. energy yeah. and I'm getting a feeling, then a feeling's not enough. It, it's just not enough. I won't. Um, another example, I had a, a beautiful little uh, woman and she had went to another reader and she, she's a hairdresser, just gorgeous woman. And she was hysterical. And she said she went to this reader and the reader told her that, you know, she was going to lose this child or if the child was born, it would have severe problems. Um, who would do this? So I immediately saw pink, pink and white and little booties. And I told her, I said, this baby is going to be 
fine, and it's going to be a little girl. And this is before, you know, she, she had just found out she was pregnant. And, um, and she was, she, you know, the little girl looks just like her mommy. She is just like a little mini me. But yeah, children, you have to be really careful with and that whole, yeah. that whole issue. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, I agree. hundred percent. hundred percent. So, so I think, uh, we'll, we'll close it out here. Do you ladies have any, uh, have any parting, uh, comments, anything you want to, you want to say before we, uh, before we head out? Just one thing. We've got a book out on Amazon. It's called three, <laughs> three Appalachian witches. If anyone is interested and also if folks come and see us at our next event, which I know we're going to be at the Trivet Paracon soon, then, um, you know, we're, we have these nifty little mini posters that we will sign for you. If we, if we have time. Beautiful. Nice. Very nice. Yeah, Ashley, any parting words? Yes. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for having us on. And we love you bunches, bunches. Hope we get to come back soon. Yes. Misty will be on here as well. And it's always a delight. And yes. I, I love you. I'm like sad to see you leave because I don't know when I'm going to see you next. But um, I love you. And then tell um, Misty we missed her. And then hello. And, and uh, you know, thank you ladies for coming on. And. I uh, really appreciate you and everything you do is amazing. And I think you're, you're wonderful. And I hope to see you all soon. Gosh, thank, you. Yeah. thank you, Pat. Thank you. thank you for having me. 100%. Thank you, ladies. Love you guys. Bye-bye. Have a great night. You too. Bye. Yeah.